Good morning, Insiders. Welcome to another edition of your Monday download. I'm really excited for what I have today. Uh, I'm not going to do any shout outs today because I've got a lot of content that I want to go over, and so I want to just jump right in. Today's video, as you know, is about postponements. And what I mean by postponements, for those that are not very familiar with foreclosure or short sale, uh, some people that watch these videos um, are actually sellers or buyers and really don't have any idea what any of these terms are. Uh, a postponement is, has to do with the foreclosure auction. In a short sale situation, when we're negotiating with the bank, um, oftentimes there's a foreclosure sale that's looming out in the future that we're kind of racing against. Time is our enemy. And when we get close to that foreclosure auction date and we still haven't had an answer from the bank yes or no on the short sale, then we have to negotiate a postponement with the bank and their attorney in order to postpone the foreclosure auction. Literally, they need to move it forward so that the bank has enough time to evaluate the um, offer that's being uh, presented to them, uh, sometimes even move it forward in order to allow a buyer enough time to close because um, the foreclosure is literally one of those things that um, often we've seen where a bank will give us an approval letter and the approval letter is only good for a few days or a couple of weeks and the reason is because there's an auction date set they can't approve a short sale beyond the auction date uh, they used to do it all the time they used to give us an approval letter for 30 days even though there was an auction date set and um, and then they would go back and then they put postpone the sale after that um, what has happened is I'm sure that somebody screwed up and forgot to postpone a sale something went to foreclosure auction uh, the, the real estate agent wasn't paying attention or negotiation company wasn't paying attention to those auction dates and how it correlated with the approvals um, because that happened a lot to us as well where we would get an approval that was out of ways they never postponed the foreclosure auction but we were always right on top of it and would make sure to get that postponed before the auction actually happened somebody must have made a mistake and didn't follow up like that and then somebody had an approval letter that was good but an auction date that had already happened and so somebody somebody got in serious trouble so a lot of banks now are just only giving you an approval to where the auction date is and then uh, requesting a postponement and then issuing you an additional uh, an extended um, approval letter so something for buyers to be paying attention to if you get an approval letter that's only valid for a couple weeks and it's because of the foreclosure auction the probability is that the bank is going to give you another extension beyond that if that's not a reasonable amount of time to close so don't wait for that other extension to happen because you're going to find yourself in a similar spot where you're running into trouble with uh, they're only going to give you another couple weeks and you didn't start your, your loan processing back here. So anyway, be um, aggressive and proactive in your loan process. Um, at Alliance, we're really good at doing postponements uh, because we have it happen all the time. On a weekly basis, we're calling trustees or attorneys for the banks and the banks themselves and negotiating terms of uh, extending out that foreclosure auction in order for the bank to look at this short sale offer and, and give us hopefully an approval. What I want to say though is that there's no way to guarantee that a bank's going to postpone a foreclosure auction. And the reason I want to stress that is because um, I think that a lot of agents that work with us or some of the agents that work with us realize we're so good at postponements that it seems like we never miss, that we never have one go to foreclosure auction. Well, it's not true. I mean, we're you know, not wizards and magicians. I mean, things happen. Banks dig in their heels. Uh, they determine that they're going to get a bigger, bigger insurance claim by taking it back as an REO than they would for an offer that, that's looking at a short sale. So they actually make more money by taking it back at foreclosure, whatever the reason is. Sometimes banks just take it to auction no matter what. And um, so you need to know that there's no guarantee and your seller needs to know there's no guarantee. If you're a seller watching this video, you need to understand that just because um, there's a really good chance that the bank's gonna postpone a foreclosure auction because there's an offer, doesn't mean that it's guaranteed. And if you had it, have any other alternative options to try and stop that foreclosure, you may wanna investigate what those are and um, pursue those. Uh, knowing that the bank could potentially still take your property to foreclosure auction. We had an example of one of these. Uh, I was actually just last week literally visiting with one of our agents, and he was reminding me about a property that we had an uh, offer on, and it was a reasonable offer, and we even had 
a good week to negotiate it with the bank, and the bank ended up saying, you know what, we're not gonna, you know, we're gonna take our chances at auction. They took it back REO, and a year later, the property sold for ten thousand dollars less than the offer that they had a year prior, and so. Um, the bank took a pretty big bath on that just in hold time and the lower purchase price. And so um, that's just an example of a situation where a bank kind of self screws it by not taking an offer um, when they have it in their hand and it happens from time to time. So just be aware of that. One of the reasons, let's talk about one of the reasons that um, banks won't take offers, especially offers that are really close to auction. If you're moving your Excite price system and you're getting down to the place where you're finally getting some offers and you're a week or less away from foreclosure auction, the chances of that going to auction skyrocket. And part of the reason that when you're close to auction that, it, that banks will see an offer and maybe decide to go foreclosure instead is because a lot of agents send in bogus offers. A lot of agents send in bogus offers even when there's no auction date set. They're just like, well, that's kind of their philosophy. They're, they're like, hey, we're gonna send in this bogus offer to kind of get the wheels turning. And you know, I've heard that theory and talked to people about that theory. And my opinion is that it doesn't really move you forward that much faster. Um, and the, the bigger problem is that it's creating issues for those of us that have legitimate offers that we're negotiating uh, for banks believing that that's a legitimate offer. This literally happened um, three weeks or four weeks ago to my brother who was buying a short sale and our office fortunately was representing him in the negotiation of that contract with the seller's bank um, but by the time we got our offer put together we we're a week away from foreclosure auction and we really had to uh, implement some serious negotiation skills just to get the bank to look at the offer and, and get them to believe this is a legitimate buyer no this is this is not a, a, a bogus offer that we're sending in just to get you to postpone the foreclosure auction. And that happens. Uh, it, it does. And it's unfortunate and it shouldn't, but it does happen. And so um, that leads me to what is the, the, the most important document when you're trying to postpone a foreclosure auction. And there's two really, but the most important document, and I put this on my Twitter the other day, is a pre-qualification or proof of funds letter. It's basically... Um, proof that the buyer can actually close that they can that they're approved for a loan or they have the cash to support the offer that they're making on the uh, on the property and banks will not even look at an offer in a normal short sale situation without that letter but especially in a postponement situation they're not going to spend the money to pay an attorney to postpone a foreclosure auction and potentially um, have the property still go to auction you know, a month later because somebody didn't even have an approval on their loan. So you, you have to have that document. And we ran into this um, just uh, two weeks ago where we literally, we had an offer on a Wednesday. The property was going to foreclosure on a Friday. We're already tight, but we didn't get the pre-approval letter from the buyer until Thursday morning. So we literally had 24 hours to try and get a foreclosure auction postponed and it didn't happen. The bank said, you know what, we're just so close to auction, we're going to take our chances. And it went back to the, to the bank and who knows what will happen with it. But um, that's the most important document. Note that if you've got a property that's getting close to foreclosure, make sure that's one of the items that the seller or the buyer sends with their purchase contract is that proof of funds or uh, pre-approval letter. And I say it's one of them, it's the most important, but there's a second one. Obviously, you have to have a purchase contract. So um, you have to have those two for the bank to even look at anything. Um, something that we're going to start looking at is implementing a what we're calling the HAFA strategy for foreclosure postponement. Um, if someone's approved in HAFA, then they get a long period of time, up to four months, that they have to sell their house without any threat of foreclosure. Um, and so as we get close to the 30-day mark prior to foreclosure auction, we're going to start looking at can we initiate HAFA for this person to get a longer period of postponement on the foreclosure auction. Um, there's no guarantee that your seller is going to be approved in the HAFA program. So just because we're working on that doesn't mean you shouldn't be continuing to market the property and continuing to try and get buyers. Because if a week or two before the auction happens, the bank comes back and says, sorry, they don't qualify for HAFA. We better have a backup plan. We better be getting close to getting an offer or else the property is for sure going to go to auction. And uh, so... That's just something that we're going to be implementing is just another strategy to keep these uh, properties around longer so we can get buyers under contract and 
get approval letters and get them closed because uh, that's ultimately what we're all here to do. So uh, if you're interested, for those of you that are not in our network, just a little plug here at the end of this video. If, you have, if you're interested at all in what Alliance does, check out our website at allianceshortsales.com. Uh, we don't charge fees for our processing. We get paid off the HUD, um, just like a real estate agent would um, out of the net proceeds. So uh, check it out uh, or give our office a call. Again, our website is Alliance Short Sales with an S on the end. Dot com. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Uh, insiders, have a great week. Keep sending in those files. Don't forget the iPad promotion's coming to an end, so uh, get them in. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.